G'day everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be starting the rest of the roof framing. So we left off with basically all of the trusses being hung, everything that was supplied there is done. And then I've made my bracing and blocking uh, for the truss heels as well as braced everything up top and then made these two end walls and lifted them up. So where we're gonna kick off is with the eaves. They're all too long. Basically they need to be trimmed back and made vertical on the end. So um, yeah, I'll trim them up with a string line and a level, and then I'm also gonna sheathe up to the heel of the truss, just so that uh, I'm kind of locking everything together. And um, then it's filling in the gaps between the trusses. So over where the stairs are gonna be here is open um, because there had to be a gap in the trusses for the stairs to come up. So I need to fill in the gap in the roof there. It's a three foot and a three and a half foot opening. And then I have a big gaping hole right in the middle between the dormers. Uh, and that'll need to be framed out as well so that we can accept the, the sheathing. And yeah, that'll pretty much be, um, you know, the next couple of days work. So one quick thing on this window, specifically the header, before I filled it with nails, sheathing it from the other side was, uh, this is a double 2x12, didn't need a triple, triple would have been overkill and it would have stopped me from doing what I did here which is adding two one inch pieces of uh, foam board with a radiant barrier and then putting a half inch spacer in and squirting a bit of foam up there and then obviously filling in here as well with the foam. That way I'm getting an R7.8 plus an air gap with a radiant barrier on each side so I'm pretty well um, keeping any heat transfer from, from coming through that header like it normally would. Doesn't always work though, this window had to be a triple 2x12 because of the, the trusses above it and the gap for the stairs, so that gap isn't much to work with. I'm probably gonna end up just filling it with foam, uh, like spray foam, but yeah, most cases um, it'll work on all the other windows and doors. So anyway, um, just cut each one to 52 and a half inches to make it up to the, the bottom of the blocking. And then um, this section in the middle here, I just need to properly secure these floor trusses before I um, can sheathe over them. So there's just a few little detail things that need to happen there. Uh, but that's pretty much it on this side. Eaves are all trimmed up. Um, string line method worked pretty good to get everything perfectly aligned. Let's see if we can get that. It should all be, be lined right up. So now it's onto the rest of the framing for the roof, like this big gap right here. I'm not sure how much the GoPro down there is catching this, but I did just put up this 2x12 ridge board all on my own, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm using these 2x6s as headers, and uh, I'd say that's the secret to doing it on your own, is just having good header position, so you really don't have to do too much once you're actually doing the hard stuff. Um, we still obviously have some work to do, bringing these dormers in and having all the, the bridge lines meet here in the middle and then make my triangles, but it's a job for another day because these storms are rolling in and it's time to go. We'll pick it back up another day. And the roof framing is finally done seven weeks later. Um, ended up being a lot longer than I thought. I did lose a few weeks in the middle there, just some other stuff. But um, yeah, it's ready to go now for sheathing. And there's you know still some braces up there that I'm just going to leave there because they're going to be above the ceiling or behind the walls. Um, I can't frame out the end of this dormer here until I get rid of the sheathing panels, which are sitting right there. So I need to feed them out work my way up and then I can frame that end wall but I'm just going to start there and, and see how we go. So a quick word on how I'm going to do the roof sheathing myself. These are 5 8 sheets so they're pretty heavy. Um, 
I put these blocks out on the fascia board so that when I slide a panel out here, because I'm in the dormer right now, that's where I put both sets of the, the sheathing for the roof um, so I can feed them out through this gap here. So I didn't build out this side wall to give myself that, that space. And yeah, I'll, I'll slide them out. These boards here should catch them um, and at least the first row. And then I can just start using each row below it to, uh, to catch the, the next one. I've now got three high on this side and I'm still at two high on the other side here. I had the thought, it was doable getting the third one up, but it's only gonna get harder and harder for the fourth and the fifth ones. So I wanted a plan that uh, kind of took the stress off standing on the outside of the roof and pushing them up. And it's this, basically a pulley, and that'll have to be moved by the, the time I get to the next run. Comes down here onto this guy, they're just two inch screws that don't go all the way through, but they go a half an inch into a 5 8 piece. And then this block here, so I'll just manually lift it up, set it on the block, come back inside, pull the, uh, the, the cable, raise it up till it slots in, and then, then it's easy from there. I can just slide it left or right to go where it needs to go. And um, yeah, let's see how it works. So I finally got done with the roof sheathing uh, and I'm gonna call that the end of this video here even though there still is a little bit of framing work to do on the dormers um, and some sheathing on the ends. Um, that should be uh, pretty straightforward. I'll just include that at the start of the next video which will be drying it in, um, wrapping, getting um, the, the windows and doors put in. Uh, it's also kind of a good stopping point for talking about price. So uh, what did it cost to get to where we are now or I'll just say to where we are when the rest of the sheathing's done and the framing because I already have the materials for that. Um, and the answer to that would be $29,500. And we already had uh, about four grand in the foundation. And then uh, there was another $4,700 in the um, subfloor and um, the rim joist and the floor joist. But I'm kind of lumping that in. So all the um, engineered wood products as well as the lumber that kind of came in you know your traditional lumber package plus a few little top-ups I had to do because I ordered a short uh, a couple things I just didn't consider uh, that was twelve thousand dollars basically for the the nuts and bolts of it uh, the trusses were expensive uh, more than I budgeted for that's for sure but obviously I ended up with a nice dormer out of it uh, but that just required a bit more engineering and so the trusses were $13,500. Um, out of interest, if I had not put the dormers in and just had a regular truss, equally spaced, 24 inches on center, still an attic truss um, like this is, but it would have been $7,500. So um, it did add $6,000 to build in the dormers, but upstairs really it is nice there'll be a nice view out that window on me on each side um and it's something we obviously couldn't do later on like you think about trying to build up front um and maybe if you're building in cash like we are then you're trying to save some money and think well maybe later on i could expand this or do whatever um but that's something you can't change um you do it now or you don't do it at all so um yeah the extra six grand was was worth it obviously then a little more in terms of my manual framing i had to do to get that all together but yeah that's uh, that's how it came out twenty nine and a half thousand dollars to get where we are right now 
And um, yeah, uh, next video is coming up soon. So uh, catch you in that one. Bye.